Bum perum pum. Bum 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 ba. Bum perum pum. Wow oh bum ba. Bum 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 bum. Wow oh. Bum ba. Bum perum bum. Wow oh. What we gonna do about this global situation? Are we just gonna sit back, wait for the next generation? We've been too patient, these trials and tribulations. They say the change gonna come, just keep holding on while the tide comes in to take us. What we gonna do about this global situation? Are we just gonna turn our backs and leave it for the next generation? We got to face it, awaken our meditations, unify our being human around using the solutions while we rewrite this equation. Remember our common ancients for the healing of all our relations. We not intended to feed urgency for Persian sprees. We not aligning with the fear-based steeds of scarcity, based people, thinking everybody else is sheeple, to be nixed by the next sequel, fourth industrial age detours. Nah, we in that focus, for generating hocus pocus, like magic to the land. We healing regions with these hands. Hooves and bands, ancient culture, not scams. Diving deep to expand, referencing ancient stands, like, look at them strong teeth, said Weston A. Price. Took traditional foods to the lab and peeped how to kick these sickening vices and his advice is to get in them animal fats. Fat solubles A, D, and K. Vitamins like these be life hack. And then we got Alan Savory's solution to top soil loss. Reversing desertification with that holistic management boss of animals on the land mimicking animals in the wild. Large groups tightly compacted keeping grass and soil alive. So that's two reasons to engage animals, right? Yet every day and night we hear all this vegan hype. And it's real interesting when you learn that plants are easier to grow for big industry that is. Maximizing with chemicals and raping the land with monocrops while convincing us all to eat their peewee and soy slop. It's a slippery slope when you follow government stocks because them dietary guidelines will quickly get you got. And waiting for technology to save us all is like waiting for Rome to choose when it would fall. Nah, the solutions are local with awareness of global impact by no more stacking because we ain't lacking but chilling back in solutions oriented by facts. <laughs> a voice coming from within our core. What are we here for? We realize that our power lies in how we live our lives and how we choose to show up. So we choose to show up as we live crowns. And this is our living prayer. Prayer from the earth. On a path to reclaim our name. Nature, ancestral medicine to heal our home. We sow this prayer in our bodies between many hands and upon our land. Illogical discordancy. But it's simple for real. We plant food for us and come from jungle. Inspiring you through this house to struggle. Nourishing our bodies is living proof. Sharing all we do to amplify this truth. Yeah, we documenting it all. Yeah, we stand in tall, we hit crowns. Let's rock with it, y'all. So, there's a really interesting conversation going on around climate change. A lot of different perspectives. Some people saying that climate change is really like industrial pollution's fault and not so much the gas of cows or the methane of cows. And some people saying that climate change is really just solar cycles that happens just like naturally. And other people saying that climate change, I'm actually gonna say like a quasi paraphrase quote right here, a transnational resource consolidation agenda using harp and geoengineering to inspire mass upheaval, fear, depression, and a willing relinquishment of rights like having children, eating regeneratively farmed um, pasture-based animal foods, and living independently of totalitarian, technocratic, monoculture smart cities. So <laughs> there's a lot of different perspectives about what climate change is. And we're not really here to align with any of them particularly, but we're making this video because we do want to acknowledge the fact that there is a problem with how we're engaging with the earth. And there also are solutions. But I think it's really important to have a term, not just for the solutions, but also for the problems. Something that takes us away for this conversation about climate change. And one of the biggest reasons is because not only is climate change an abstract word, which I'm gonna go into abstract words in another video one day, but 
it's an abstract word, which means that it's relatively defined. It can be defined by anybody. But because it's an abstraction, it's right now mostly being controlled by the people who want to use it for whatever their reasons are. In other words, it's a trigger word. Mm-hmm. You hear it in the media. You hear it's a big political issue. You hear young people using it all the time. Right, you or know? climate crisis. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's on the minds of the next generation. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that we're being mindful about these things because m- many times the the main you know thing that's on the internet or the thing that's that's on the headline of the news is the very thing that is blinding us from seeing the real issue at hand right, right. and it can be a distraction right it can be um you know a trap mm-hmm. you know to get us to thinking in certain ways to get us uh acting in in ways right. of you know fear-based thinking and fear-based acting right and fall it right into the hands of, of the politicians or the big businesses right. that are promoting, you know, these um, these headlines. Yeah. And um, we want to actually, you know, find our ground and find and stand on sound, you know, sound um, ideas and sound principles right. that that keep us standing in reality. Yeah. You know? So I like to refer to them as physical reference terms that you can reference nature with or at least reference a concept of nature whereas with climate it's more so talking about the patterns of weather you think weather when you hear climate but we want to get us away from that not not that it doesn't it's not important to pay attention to that but just that the roots of that is kind of hard to pinpoint but what we can pinpoint it's, it's speculation right? right it's a lot of speculation or you know some people say they can prove it but i can't prove it but what i can show what i can prove to myself is how much pollution i'm making is you know how many people around me are starving or homeless you know, is um, whether or not the land that I'm getting food from or that the animals that I'm even farming, you know, or the, the, the land that I'm farming on, what's happening to the soil? Is it getting degraded or is it getting built up? You know, I can qualify those things with my eyes, with my fingers, you know, and various things like that. So, yeah, And if you want to get more uh, technological with it, we can test our soils. Right, we can we test, can our, test our water. Right, exactly. You know? So all of that, right, it's like that to me, when we're in harmony with that, we uh, we call it a symbiosis, you know. And with the ecology, when we're in when when we're out of harmony, we're in discordancy with it. So we're referring to that. Like I changed it in the the opening to ecological discordancy, and we're still playing around with the language, and it may continue to evolve. But it's just the concept of we are not in symbiosis with the ecology around us locally or globally in many ways. So how can we address that? And this video is really about that. It's not really about like, you know, how we can address it, but it's really just about understanding another term that can be used um, while thinking about the problems at hand so that people that are that want to manipulate the masses can't manipulate you as easily because you know that we're not talking about this big idea. Like I can't qualify how much CO2 I'm putting into the environment based off of my own measurement points. So I'm not going to let somebody else tell me because of my child or because of, you know, the way that I eat that I'm putting more CO2 into the uni- into the world. Like there's a lot of things pe- there's a lot of ways I can combat that, but there's also a lot of ways that I can dis- disregard that by focusing on what actually matters to me, which is my ecology, my local and global environment, but in a way that I can quantify, not somebody else in power or whatever that can tell me, you know, because in many ways that information is manipulated. That information is is crazy. Like it's very biased and it has a lot of agendas behind it. And I just don't want to get caught up in that. And I want to give my viewers, our viewers, the tools to potentially not get caught up in it either. So that's really what this video is about. Short and simple. And uh, and we're not saying that we have solved this issue that we are you know that we are free from it because we are in the thick of it just like you yeah we are you know the struggle is real but we know that day in day out we're focusing on making the changes in our lives to make steps towards that you know in a way that um is practical in ways that we can share with everyone that we know and meet and and hope to inspire others to do the same um, or something em- similar. emulating those who we recognize are taking those steps you know so many people are doing something significant on this planet and 
yeah, we, we honor them and honor the work that they're doing. And, um, and we're just, we're just trying to stay grounded so we don't get caught up, you know, because there are a lot of agendas out there. And I think it's just important not to let the way that people use words to put you in a spell. So the best way to do that is to have your own words that you define for yourself. Something that you can communicate with others clearly, but something that you understand within yourself how you define it. And you also understand how other terms could be potentially being defined just to manipulate you. So maybe you stay away from those terms. Not just manipulate you, but manipulate the masses. The whole point of this video is really just ecological discordancy is a term that I will be using instead of climate change. And like you saw, if you, may, if you were paying attention in the intro, I edited, I edited it in. <laughs> I hate that word. Edited. There we go. I edited it in the intro. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna try to check my words from now on because I'm not trying to be caught up in that, that purging spree that may be coming by way of those terms. And in conclusion, we just wanna um, acknowledge, you know, all the signs that Mother Nature has is showing us continually you know when things are out of balance you know we, we recognize we see them you know if you look at desertification 60 percent of the land mass is drying up and desertifying if you uh if you look about you know look at all the the pollution and the the plastic that just keeps piling up in the oceans and on land you know killing animals left and right um you know these are all very clear you know clear imbalances that we can see where our role lies you know we can see where you know we can have an impact so um we hear the signs we recognize them and you know we pledge to to be examples of of making the change of representing lives that are striving to support the symbiosis and the symphony of the balance of nature Sure. Sure. All right. So thank you for watching and um, let us know, you know, what's your experience around all this wording and this intentional living and this re res response, you know, responding to the earth and also to media and also to, you know, random people on the street. Like, what's it like hearing about all these people talking about all these issues and trying to find your centering? And does this support it a little bit? And if not, then let's have a conversation and we can figure out something that's more productive, more supportive, because we're all about growth here. The first part of the video was um, a sneak peek to a song. We're in the process of producing and writing. And, um, you know, so that's coming out too. It's a prayer. It's, you know, it's a, uh, it's an offering. Or it's a calling for everyone to come together around solutions and around our common um, around the things that bring us together, around you know our deepest, deepest interconnectedness, mm -hmm. and um, you know sharing the responsibility and the weight of the issues that affect all of us. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you want to get if you want to hear that song, it'll be out on our Patreon soon, and then we'll bring it out through our video. You know, once we get all the footage to make a music video, so. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Rudy Crowns if you want to stay tuned into the song earlier than everybody else. All right, so yeah, thank you for watching. Remember that we're doing this for all our relations and we hope that you feel yourself as one of them and uh, stay connected, stay family, stay tuned in. All right, peace. Peace. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Bye. I can go with the bloopers though. <laughs> We've got to patience. <laughs> We've been too patient for the trials and tribulations. Did you say patient? <laughs> Are we just gonna sit back, wait for the next? You know, yo, you see the wobbling? <laughs> we not intending to feed it. Sean, we got to patience. Oh, can you fix his feet?
Don, we got too patient. <laughs> Sit back, wait for the next generation. We've been too patient through the trials and tribulations. Wait, but I did it. I messed up with that. <laughs> <laughs>